Yep. Right. But well, I am one of the defenders Definitely a defender. of the new school hip hop and one of the people that I defend the most, the name that I that y'all always, always hear me always, say. Always, always. I tweet it. I, I'd say everything about it. I'd say everything about her because she is a fucking monster yes. of MC. Rhapsody is Rhapsody. here with me. Yeah. 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 Up, what up, Rap? And my man, yep. one of the greatest producers that ever get behind a beat yep. or a board or anything, Mr. Knife Wonder is here. Yep. Jamla is in the building. What's going on, bro? <laughs> what up, Knife? How you doing? What's little, bloody? I still rock my little brother album in the car all the time. <laughs> nice. The Minstrel Show is one of my favorite bodies of work. I'm yeah, straight up man. serious about that, Thank bro. You. I appreciate it. I, I, I appreciate any person that can stick to their guns and do this shit and all of this shit that goes on in the music business and do it the way that they want to do it. And right. not give a fuck about who got what or what kind of car somebody driving, just doing their thing. You Straight tell up. me, Knife Wonder, where you found this young lady at, man? Uh, she was in a, uh, a crew at uh, NC State called H2O. And then within that crew was a group called Cooley High. And I met them around Mr. Showtime, as a matter of fact. Okay. We, just, we were about to drop our album, and uh, one of our group members was like, come by and meet the team. And I went by and I listened to all their music because a lot of them rhymed. And, and I heard her, and I was like, She's your star, man. And that was 10 years ago. I was like, That was 10 wow. years ago? That was 2005. Yeah. And you heard that 10 years ago. I can imagine what I she sounds like now. I said, she's your star, man. I said, they, I'm telling you. And now, so, Rapsy, were you dedicated to, to this thing that was moved, this movement that you guys had at that time? When, yeah. When Knight said you were a star? It was real early on. Like, we, we probably didn't have that organization for a year. And at that time, the songs that he heard me on were the first two songs I had ever written or recorded. Wow. So, you know... I was still early on it, but it's always been a love and a passion, so, you know, that was it, man. So how did you pluck her out of all of this stuff that was going on? And, and, how, right. and how did the other people feel about it? Fuck Rhapsody, son. Leave you know, <laughs> us solo. Let's go leave us to go with Knife Wonder like we ain't shit. <laughs> My shit is John Blaze. I got John Blaze shit. You know what? I, I mean, I really found out how hard it is, you know, for women in this industry. You know, just, you know, branding, getting our brand right over the years. And, you know, first you like pushing the music, then you start to feel this pushback that us, you know, we as men don't really feel. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, aligning yourself with a woman that's in the game and, and trying to stay true to her guns. I mean, you really start to feel that pushback, that constant pushback. That's probably why we named one of the tapes, She Got Game. Right. To prove mm -hmm. that point. But it's always been a constant pushback. But, you know, no matter what, you know me, man. I don't, I don't give a fuck. Right. I'm going to do, you know, what do the you. culture taught me how to do. And that's always been first for me. You know what I mean? I learned that from you. I learned that from Millie Mel. You know what I'm saying? So, right. And, and the same thing, I need to pay that forward. And, you know, and she got the same thing. She understands the culture. And she understands what it means and what it means. To it permeates, for me, Rhapsody, it permeates through your music that you understand this culture. Mm -hmm. right. That you love it. What turned you on to hip-hop? Man, I can't remember exactly what the first record was. But it was the MC Light for Georgia video that made me know I wanted to rhyme. But wow. you know, it was. Have you ever met Light? I met her last year. Okay. I did Black Girls Rock. I met her and Lauren for the first time the same night. Wow. Yeah, wow. So that was a big night. Nice. That's but it, was, it was just like growing up and, you know, riding with your older cousins and they playing Illmatic and, you know, we having family functions and. You know, the younger kids got hip-hop playing out the car, dancing, like, you know, I just fell in love with it. Uh -huh. And then watching videos on TV, like, uh, Method Man and Mary J's Blog, All I Need is one of my favorite videos, and it made me fall in love with this magical place, New York, and I, it was like a wormhole, there was no turning back. Right. And no. you just started writing after that? Uh, nah, I just started, I started writing poetry in high school. Okay. I, I started writing my first rhymes in summer of 2005. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Just started writing like ten years ago. So y'all been rocking for ten years now. Yeah, be a lot of trust. Fast. I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't sign her at first. You know what I mean? Because you know, there's a lot of dudes in the area trying to be her manager and all this kind of stuff and all that, <laughs> man. And, oh, you know, and at the time I was uh, teaching in North Carolina Central, well, I still am. And, uh -huh. You know, there's a studio over there, and she would come over with the coolie eye, you know, cast or whatever, and then you know, one thing turned to another, and I came up with the idea of Jamla, which I got from Tamala. From right. Time. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and you know. And she was like, yo, man, you know, I'm trying to trying to get down with it. And that was 2008. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And y'all been rocking ever since? Ever since. Yeah. Ever since. That's a good thing. So yeah. you've been on a grind, like a real like, super mm -hmm. grind. Real grind. I didn't put out, I signed in 2008. I put out my pro first project December 2010. Like those first two years, it was just development. Uh -huh. Development. And 
what How do you feel like Knife has helped you develop? Wow. He's, he's taught me a lot about the, the art of rhyming, you know, the scientific part of it, you know, about inflections and, and uh, where to breathe at, and, you know, just things like that, that the mathematics of it, breaking it all the way down. It's just not rhyming words. It's making your words believable and making them easy to mm -hmm. remember and, and, and cadence how to ride a beat and make your make your voice an instrument. Delivery. Like, yeah, and then, you know, on the, he taught me how to, about work ethic. You, mm -hmm. like, you want anything, you got to be in there day and night doing it. Like, he would be in the studio till 4 in the morning, and he's already worked with Jay-Z, and he has his plaque. So I'm like, well, if he's here till 4, I got to stay till at least 10 a.m. the next day. Right. So <laughs> what I do is I go home, I pack a suitcase, and I stay at the studio all week. That's the grind. Like, how 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 was your uh, how was your parents feel about what you're doing? <laughs> Man, being from North Carolina and especially like a small country town, like at first they just thought it was a hobby, um, and you know I didn't really talk much about it because you know from there they don't know anybody that's really made it su a success in the arts. You know, you you grow up to be like a, a accountant, a doctor, a lawyer. I go own a business, but somebody to be a rapper, and my dad hated hip hop. Oh, wow. Know? So, but now, like, he kind of gets it, being that I'm so into it. He's come around a lot. And, you know, my mom calls me, like, I heard this new Jay Z and this Drake song. So, you know, at first it, w it was a battle, <laughs> it was a struggle. You know, once you get a job, you could do that on the side. It's like, it's not a hobby for oh, me. Oh, yeah, you ain't the only one. Right, I want this mm -hmm. to be my job. You ain't the only one. Right. I was working as a school safety officer when you're on TV raps call. And I told my mother, I'm taking this, this gig on MTV. My mother's like, oh, <laughs> how you got benefits? <laughs> the hell are you talking about? It's that true. MTV, that rap, that ain't going to last long. You must be, cr boy, you better keep that job in school safety. I'm like, my so was you, wrong. You know, yeah. yeah. You kind of got to have tunnel vision. You got to block everything out. Just yeah. go. Just how, go. How do you block out what everybody else is doing? Man, I think one is, is surrounding myself with like-minded people with mm -hmm. my team being under ninth and, and being with uh, Big Remo and GQ and, and Cash and the Soul Council like you got to put yourself around people that believe in you right you know? Definitely. and, and start steady feeding you positive things and, and he's walking proof too that it can be done so I have an example too right. to look off of so that's that's what it makes it easier to block it out and like I told you off the air I don't feel like I'm listening to a female that's love man I just feel like I'm listening to a dope MC. And when I heard you on Kendrick shit, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Almost crashed my shit. I swear to God. My man sent it to me. KB sent it to me, the zip file. And I put it in. And you know, you now you know you connect the radio, your phone yeah. to the car. So I'm riding. I'm listening to Kendrick shit. I'm like, wait a minute. Kendrick done went somewhere with this shit. I saw, I feel like I'm listening to some, like, organized noise, like, outcast type of shit. Like, he's really going there. And then I heard that. And then I started listening to Complexion. I was like, Oh shit, that's fucking Rhapsody. Oh shit, I almost crashed my shit. I did. But you did your thing. I thank you. You did your thing. How the fuck did that happen? Is it just people that respect each other saying, fuck it, let's do some music? Yeah, man. We, me and Kendrick have known each other since uh, we met in 2011 for the okay. first time. Um, we did our first record in 2011 too, but like he's always been a supporter of the music, and you know, same with me. Like yeah, he tweeted, he'll tweet you out too. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he came up with the the concept about a year and a half ago. It was the day after he did the control verse. Okay. And he was in Africa. I was shooting a video at premieres, and Knife was on the phone with him, and he was like, "Yo, I have this concept. I want to put Rhapsody on my next album." So we were like, "Okay, man, just hit us whenever you're ready." Didn't hear anything for a year and a half. January 11th of 2015. You know, Dave, uh, Kendrick's manager, hit ninth. is like, I'm about to send you a record. You know, Kendrick going to rap to get on it. And that's, right. how, that's how it happened. Now, how long did it take you to write that? Man. Were you pacing? Oh, shit. I can't I wrote it. on this shit. I wrote, <laughs> how many rhymes did you throw up? Did you throw away? I wrote it in pieces. Um, I started on the one you heard, and I stopped. And I was like, mm, I'm going to write another one. I got, like, halfway. I was like, I don't like that one either. And went back to that one. So, I don't know. Maybe like an how, hour, how, hour. How, how, when did you hear it, Ninth? When she finished it? I sent him voice notes. <laughs> uh, we talking when she finished the rap? Yeah. Rhyme. She sends. She sends the way she does it is she'll rhyme. She'll you know, spit a rhyme and she'll send like voice notes or whatever. Right. Of, of the rhyme or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, that that's it. And then we recorded it in, in BC and sent it to him. And Kendrick was like, man, I just like put on. I just like to support the people I like. This right. is who I like, and she's the only rap feature on the album. Yeah, that's crazy too. So. That's big. That's, that's, he gave me a look, man. It's, it's that's a, a hell look. of a look. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, I noticed that too. I was well like, oh deserved. shit. The only rap feature on this damn album is Rhapsody. Only one. Only one. And, it, and, it, and it kind of validated what the fuck I've been saying <laughs> on this radio about you. Support Rhapsody, man. Support Ninth Wonder. Yes. Support Jamla Music. Because this is the true essence of hip hop. And if you're not, and like I told y'all, there's great hip hop out there. You got to look for it. You got every, hey, listen. You got to go through some shit sometime to find a diamond, okay? And she's a true diamond. And thank you for being here, sister. I, I really appreciate it. Rhapsody in the building, Knife Wonder in the building, Ed Lover Show, Max Smith, Sirius XM.